I'm a firm believer that the best strategy is the one that fits your playing style. As for me, I like playing on a low bankroll and trying to get on house money. I also like to handle the dice, so I play the pass line, and I like to play the more common numbers. In fact, the first time I ever played at a craps table, the pass line and six and eight was all I did. Now back then I didn't really know what I was doing, but now I know that you can use your winnings to play on house money on other bets. And that's the goal of this strategy. I call it the Gauls 17. Now Gauls is a nickname I grew up with derived from my last name. I was born on the 17th, it's my lucky number, and it happens to be the perfect amount for a $5 pass line bet and one unit on the six and eight each. And it's exactly what I'm gonna tell you about right now on Yo 11 Bread. In this strategy video, as I said, we're going to be playing the pass line and a couple of place bets. At some point, we'll be pressing and spreading our bets and playing on house money. Now, if any or all of these terms are new to you, click on the icon on the top of your screen right now to be taken to a playlist that covers all of these terms. Then come right back here to learn about the Gauls 17. When I play craps, I'm not looking to make a ton of money. I'm looking to get the best bang for my buck with the lowest amount of investment possible. In this case, we have a $17 investment. And if we stretch that out over the course of 11 shooters and round up, we're playing with a fairly conservative bankroll of $200. Speaking of conservative, that's the style of play this is. The general premise is we wanna hit a six or an eight, spread it out to the inside numbers, and then the very next thing we do is work to recoup this initial $17, so we're playing on house money as soon as possible. After that, we're gonna spread out to the four and 10, press everything up one more unit, and any winnings we have after that, we're gonna to put towards our odds bets. So let's take a look at how that works, roll by roll and point by point. Okay, so when we're ready to start making our bets, whether we're the shooter or not, we're gonna take $17 and put it off to the side because that's the most we're gonna risk per shooter. We're gonna get our $5 and put it on the pass line right away. Now, if we happen to lose this pass line bet, we're gonna go ahead and just pull it out of our general bankroll to replace it. We're not touching our $12 left over from our 17. On the other hand, if we happen to win our pass line bet, we're gonna put this off to the side and add it to the $12 because that's gonna start working towards the next step. Now, if the shooter happens to roll a four or a 10, it really doesn't matter one way or the other. And let's say we didn't win or lose on the pass line bet. They rolled a four on their first come out roll. We're gonna throw our $12 out and ask the dealer to place the six and the eight. Now, let's say we did win the pass line earlier and we've got that extra $5. We're gonna pick either the five or the nine, really doesn't matter. The whole point is, with our winnings, when we hit these numbers, we want to get the five, six, eight, and nine, our inside numbers, covered, and that'll finish our first step. So for example, if on the come out roll they happen to roll a five, now we've got those numbers covered, and we can go to our next step. If the point is a four, well, we have to get one more hit of any of these numbers, get our seven dollars, place whichever number is remaining, and we put $2 away, working towards our next goal. Now, what happens if the shooter happens to roll a six or an eight? Because that's what our initial place bet is. Well, in this case, let's say the shooter has a come out roll of a six. We're gonna place the eight. We're gonna keep this extra dollar to the side. That would be our cap. We're gonna play the field for essentially one roll. And hopefully we'll hit a field number and we can split that up and pass it to the five or the nine. Now, if we happen to, in this case, roll an eight, we're gonna lose this, but we're gonna get paid $7 on our eight. We're just gonna pocket this $2 and get back out in the field. On the other hand, if we're playing the field and we roll a five, 
Well, we don't collect anything because we don't have a place bet on the five, and we also lose in the field. In this case, we're just sort of out of luck, and we're going to roll with what we've got going, trying to fill in the five and the nine. Let's take it to the next step, though. Let's say, hypothetically, we do have whatever point. Let's go ahead and make it a ten. We've got our inside numbers covered. Now, our next step is to recoup our initial $17. So any of these are going to pay $7, so it's going to take a couple of hits. But once we've got our $17 collected, we have accomplished that step. So let's see, we're at 10, 15, so one more hit and we'll be there. So it's going to take three hits after that point. So we've got our $17 collected. We're going to put this off to the side. That's officially ours. It's locked in and now we're playing on house money. We've already got $5 profit. Well, the next step is to cover the five and the 10. So we're gonna go ahead and place this, in this case on the four, because the 10 is covered by the point. Now that we have all these numbers covered, we're gonna go ahead and press everything up one unit. So let's say we got lucky, we hit all of our numbers a bunch of times. We got everything pressed up the way we like it. Everything's up to two units. And maybe we want a little extra in profit. Once we've won a little bit in profit, our little play money section here, this is now going towards odds and we're gonna do three, four, or five times odds. In this case, the point's a 10 because that's just where we happen to end up in this scenario. Our odds would be three times odds. And now we have quite an impressive spread on the table, all on house money, all with only a $17 investment. So we've got 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 62, $74, all of house money after only an initial investment of $17. That's the basic premise of the Gall 17, but let's see how it pans out with a live roll right now. Okay, we've got our $200 bankroll. Let's go ahead and put that $17 off to the side. And actually, let's go ahead and get our $5 cast line bet going right away. We've got our $12 of leftover play money. And let's get our first shooter going. Oh boy, they pulled the seven. Let's see if that works. Well, 10, hard 10. All right, we're gonna mark the point of a 10. Our strategy puck today is actually a practice used puck from the Milwaukee Admirals. So we've established our point of a 10. We're going to take our extra $12, ask the dealer to place the 6 and the 8, and now we can start rocking and rolling with the strategy. And shooter rolls a 9, doesn't affect us one way or the other. And another 9, 9s are popular, and a 5 still doesn't help us. And an eight, an eight does help us. All right, we're gonna get paid $7. It's our choice in this case, whether we wanna bet the five or the nine. We've seen a couple of nines, so let's go ahead and place that. We collect our $2 and put that to the side so we can try and place the five right away. And a six, that helps us out as well. So we're in this case, we've already got the nine covered. We're gonna place the five. We're gonna collect these $2. Now we've got $4 working to try and recoup our $17 off of our inside numbers. And a 10, we hit our point, beautiful. We're gonna get paid on the pass line. We're gonna put this off to the side. This goes towards collecting our $17. I like to play with the table. We're gonna leave our place bets off since the puck is off. Still on the pass line, same shooter coming out and a hard six. So since we have the six covered, we can actually collect this and put it towards our $17. If the opposite happened, let's say the point was a six and now it's a 10, we might actually need to go backwards a little bit in our steps. That's okay, you can go back and forth, it's not a big deal. And we are at $15, so one more hit and we'll have recouped our money. Hard 10 doesn't affect it one way or the other, but a nine does. Pays us $7, so with that, I'm gonna pull my $10 out here, add five is 15, 16, and 17, and we're gonna put our $17 investment off the side. It's locked in, and we have 
five dollars left over to start working towards the next steps four or ten doesn't matter i'm gonna go ahead and place the ten because i think we've hit a couple of those today and now i just need to hit the or uh cover the four and uh nine that's gonna allow me to cover the four so we're gonna get paid seven dollars i'm gonna place the four and now this two dollars works towards pressing everything up i like to start from the inside and move up other people might say, well, I hit the nine, so I'm gonna press the nine. I'm gonna go from the inside out for this strategy. And uh, five, so we're gonna get paid $7 for our $5 place bet on the five. I'm gonna actually ask the dealer then to press the eight. We're gonna try and get everything up to two units. We're gonna hold on to that extra dollar. One more hit will be in good shape to press more up, but a three doesn't change anything one way or the other. A four does though, so we're gonna get paid nine dollars on that four. Can't really press the six because that's our point. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw one more dollar down, ask the dealer to press the five and the nine. Now all we need to do is press the four and the ten. And a nine. So we've got two units on there, which is gonna pay us fourteen dollars. And we can do just that. Press the four and the ten. And now we have $6 off to the side. We're on the six, so we're looking for max odds here. So once we have $25 in here, we're gonna be playing odds. And 12, boxcars doesn't affect us. And a 10, hard 10. We've got two units on there. We're gonna get paid 14. I'm actually gonna throw a dollar down, do one for 15, because nickels will be easier to count. We've got $20, one more hit, and we'll have successfully completed the Gall 17, that's a two, craft dice two. And three, doesn't affect us one way or the other. A 10 is huge though. Again, we're gonna drop a dollar down, get paid 15 for one. And look at this, our first shooter, we have successfully completed the Gall 17. So as a quick recap, we used our winnings to cover the five and the nine. We recouped our initial $17, we covered the four and the 10, we pressed everything up one more unit, and we got to max odds, all with just an initial $17 investment. Let's keep rolling, let's see if we can hit that six, see if we can hit that point, make a little extra money. And uh, five, all right, we're gonna get paid $14. I'm gonna throw a dollar down, take 15 for one. And at this point, everything we're doing is pure profit. If you want, you could potentially press these up even more. I don't do it, I like to just take the money, and there's the seven. All right, seven up, line away. Not a big deal, because we got a nice little roll going there, right? So with our initial $17, I don't like to count my money right away, but there's $23 in profit off of a $17 investment and completely on house money. So let's get set up. We can take our $17, put it off to the side right away. We can get our place bet going right away because we know we're going to be on the place bet right away. Extra $12 is off to the side, and we've got a new shooter coming out. And an 8. Point's going to be an 8. All right, so in this scenario, we're going to take this $12. We're only going to place the 6. We're going to get in the field right away. We're gonna pocket that dollar to try and work towards the next step. And seven up. So there's the opposite end of the spectrum. 0.7 out. But hey, we saved a dollar off of it, right? So let's get our $17, get our pass line bet out right away. And took a lot of time shuffling, but new shooter coming out. They're gonna establish a point of a 10. Get our $12 out, place the six and the eight, and let's roll. And point seven out again, that's twice in a row. Like I always say, all you need is one hot roll to make up for a couple of bad ones. Get our pass line bet right away, and our 17 set off to the side. Well, that one hot shooter had a seven facing when they grabbed the dice, why not try it again? Point's gonna be a six. So we'll place the eight and we'll get in the field and hold on to our last dollar. And an eight, hard eight. So we're gonna lose in the field, but we're gonna win on our place bet. 
So in this case, we're gonna collect our $2 and get right back in the field. And a three, we're gonna win in the field this time. And we're gonna go ahead and spread this to the five and the nine. So now we've got our inside numbers covered. We can start working to recoup our 17, which we already have $3 towards. And a four doesn't affect us right now. But a nine does, a nine helps. We're gonna get paid $7 bringing our recoup fund up to $10. One more hit and we're there. And there's a nine, just like that. We hit $17 recouped. So we're gonna put this off to the side and now we're gonna start working towards placing the five, I'm sorry, the four and the 10. But I rolled a five, it's almost like I willed the dice to make it happen. We're gonna just, doesn't matter, four or 10, it's your choice. We're gonna place the four and we're gonna take our $2, put that in our play money, work towards the 10. But that's not gonna happen, seven out. But again, we recouped our money, we're in it for the long haul and we even technically made $2 in profit. So let's go ahead, get our $17 off to the side, $5 pass line bet right away. And new shooter coming out. And that's going to be a 9. Alright, so we're going to place the 6 and the 8. And we're rolling. And an 8. Well, this makes life easy. We've already got the 9 covered by the point, so we're going to place the 5, collect our $2, and start working towards recouping our 17. And we're going to hit our point of a 9. Now here's what we're going to do here. We're going to go ahead and hold on to this $5. Because if we roll another nine, obviously we're good to go. If we roll one of these numbers, we gotta move a place bet around. If we roll a four or a 10, we're gonna go ahead and place the nine. And we rolled a six. So in this case, we don't need a place bet here. We're gonna move our six over to the nine. We're gonna pocket this extra dollar and now we've got eight dollars working towards 17. And that's gonna be a four, which doesn't affect us quite yet. Nor does a 10. But a five does, we're gonna pay $7 on our five. We're gonna collect that. And one more roll should recoup it for us. One more hit, I should say. That roll, as well as the one before it, were tens. Those don't help us, but a five does. We're gonna get paid $7, and we've officially recouped our 17. We're gonna put this off to the side. We already have $5 towards our next step can place the four or the 10, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and place the four. And now we need to cover the 10 with one more hit. Box cards won't do it, but an eight will. So we hit the eight, place the 10, put our $2 away for our working money. Now we need to press everything up one unit, starting from the inside out, and that's gonna be a hard eight. We're gonna ask to press the eight. We're gonna collect our extra dollar. We've got $3 working towards our next hit. Our next step, rather, press the next number. All right, we hit a four. We're gonna get paid $9. Uh, let's go ahead and press the five and the nine in this case. So in this case, we'll press the five there. We'll drop a dollar down to be able to press the nine. And now we just need to cover the four and the 10. And that's not gonna quite happen, seven out. Six one, it's no fun. Well, it was kind of fun though, because we still managed to recoup our money and make $2 profit. And there's the timer, we just sevened out. Let's go ahead and count everything up and see how we did using the Gall 17. Okay, so out of our $200 bankroll, we ended up with 175, 180, 190, $194. We had one roll that developed all the way through and that was kind of countered with a couple of consecutive .7 outs. But at the end of the day, again, 11 minutes simulated here on this table is probably gonna be at least an hour, maybe more, for only losing $6. Now again, the dice are gonna affect how you do whether you win or you lose and it's going to be different every single day so your results may be a lot better they may be a lot worse that all depends on the dice but i hope you enjoyed this strategy 
I hope you can take this and use it as an opportunity to play with a lower bankroll, a conservative method where you recoup your money early on, but still have the opportunity to take advantage of a long roll. If you like this strategy, leave me a thumbs up, drop a comment down below if you have any holes that you'd like to see poked in it, because I'd love to be able to keep developing the strategy and make it better and stronger. If you have a unique strategy that you'd like to see, leave a comment down below and I'll do that strategy. If you have a strategy that you think you've never seen before that you've come up with, message me on any of the social media platforms down below and tell me what it is, tell me how it works, and I'll put it on my channel for you. Hit me up on the same social media platforms, instant message me, private message me, if you happen to have a unique puck you'd like to see featured on my channel. As always, it has to have an on and an off so we can use it. And I do plan on doing other strategy videos, both my own unique strategies that I've never seen before, as well as some other strategies that I'll be, we'll say, borrowing from other YouTubers. With that being said, if I'm using someone else's strategy, I will make sure that they get the credit for it. But make sure you're subscribed to Yoleven Bread to see those videos and more videos about everything craps. Make sure you're tipping your dealers and always play within your means. Thanks for watching Yoleven Bread. And good luck, everybody.